In this video, I am going to provide you with a few different methods you can use to raise a garage floor. And obviously, this is not going to provide you with every single detail you need to build the garage floor. However, I will do the best I can. So it isn't uncommon to have a step down from the living area into a garage because the garage floor is usually lower. And it's usually going to be sloping towards the front garage door or the garage door that you are going to open to park your car. And you can see right here where we have about an inch back here and we work our way all the way down to probably about three or four inches here. So we are going to be dealing with a sloping floor every once in a while and this might not be a big deal to you. And you can always frame your floor with a slope in it if you want to. And I really don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. However, that would depend upon the slope and you. Now the first measurement we are going to look at will be, in my opinion, if you have anything less than an inch and a half that needs to be filled in then I would suggest using a mixture of mortar and concrete and of course this will depend if you have something that is less than an inch then you're probably going to want to use a mixture of sand and cement and I'm only suggesting this because sometimes the rocks are going to be a little difficult to finish if they are larger than the distance you're trying to fill in and you can always use a mixture of sand and cement in this area Area. And then once you get to about an inch and a half, start using concrete with pea gravel or gravel that's at least less than the dimension you're trying to fill. And you can always use concrete to fill this in if it's larger. And that's actually what I would recommend doing to prevent dealing with a wide variety of other issues. So this would be my first choice for raising a garage slab. Next up on the list, we will start with a distance of an inch and a half. And this will allow us to put down three quarter inch sill plates on the bottom and then some type of a joist going in this direction. And I have my plates spaced about 16 inches on center. And you can always space them a little bit closer or a little bit farther and the joists are also spaced about 16 inches on center. And those can also be spaced a little bit closer or a little bit farther. And then after we have completed this, we can install our sheathing. And since we already have a foundation here, the sheathing isn't going to provide us with much structural strength. For example, we don't need to stagger our plywood. We could run the plywood all the way down without staggering it if we want to. However, again, it might be a little better to stagger the plywood. And you will probably need tongue and groove plywood for this also. I have square edge here just for our example. And you can see here where the top of the existing floor is going to be even with the top of the new floor framing. And you can always leave a gap between the exterior concrete and the lumber. And this gap, of course, would prevent moisture from absorbing into the lumber that would have been in direct contact with the concrete if the concrete would have got wet or moist. So hopefully that makes sense. And if we are going to flatten out the floor or level it out, we are going to need to install some type of strip of lumber that is going to be sloping so that we can flatten out the floor. And even though I didn't extend this all the way to the wall, you can and then block it if needed. So this is one method with the joist going in this direction or perpendicular to our sill plates that will be fastened to the concrete with some type of fastener. Another method you could use would be to fasten the sill plates down and then attach strips of lumber to the top of them. And something like this might work a little better than the other method. However, it might require a little more work because if you use any type of fasteners to fasten the sill plates down to the concrete, these strips might be in the way and you might need to notch sections of the strip over the fasteners to make it work. So something like this, again, might work better, but it might require a little more work depending upon what type of fasteners you're going to use. And each one of these will progressively get smaller 
as we go to the other end. So we're looking for a three quarter inch gap here so that our plywood will work out. And if you're going to use smaller plywood, five eighths or even larger inch and an eighth plywood, then you will have to adjust accordingly. And keep in mind that the footing might not be perfectly straight. And you might need to start from this point and level your floor in both directions. And if for whatever reason you run into some type of a problem that uh, you might need a little help with, as long as it's not a structural engineering problem, feel free to leave a question in the comment area and I'll answer it as soon as possible. I just had somebody give me a lecture about providing people with a false illusion that I'm a structural engineer. And of course the sheathing will run in the opposite direction and you could always have a rim joist running around the perimeter to provide you with a little more structural integrity. And if you notice here, something like this isn't going to be the best choice you can make because it's too thin. Something like this, maybe something that's at least three quarters of an inch thick, might work out just fine. However, if that is not the case, you might need to install a larger board. And if you run into a situation where you can nail the floor joist to the wall framing, then I would say go for it. And of course, if you are looking for a thicker board, you could always do something like this. And that would be to start with a ripped piece of lumber and then butt your sills up against it and your joist up against it. And of course, you can see here where we have something that is going to be a little thicker over here. And I'll leave it up to you whether you're going to notch it over your sill plate or butt it up to it. And don't forget to use an adhesive of some type on top of the joist before you install and nail or finish your plywood. Now in the next example we are going to go with a deeper floor and if you have something that's about four or five inches you might be able to use a two by sill and of course that can be treated lumber. You can always use treated one by for the previous methods or get some three quarter inch treated lumber and rip it into three inch wide strips that you can use to securely attach any materials you're going to use to the concrete foundation. And one of the easier methods, but won't always be the best, will be to use shots and pins. And don't forget to check with your local rental yard. They might have another device that might work a little better than the shots and pins. And the floor framing can be nailed with 16 D nails for two by. If you have a one by, you might need to use 8D nails or even 6D nails, or you might consider using some type of building hardware. And some of this building hardware can be attached with screws also. And I like to have one nail about in the middle on one side and two nails on the other side if I'm going to be nailing it. Another view of the framing anchor. And now let's go ahead and take a look at something else you can do. You can fasten this board to the side of the stem walls if that will work better for you. Again, you might need to use a combination of the methods I have and even come up with a few of your own. Like I say, you got to get creative every once in a while and my videos are meant to provide you with an inspiration, something that you might be able to do. However, you've got to give it some serious consideration to whether you're going to be able to do it. Next up, we can toe nail the joist into the ledger here. Two nails on one side, one nail on the other side, and then one nail on each side going into the sill framing. And again, you could use building hardware for that if needed. So one nail, one nail, and then two nails on this side and then one nail going in. And I really don't recommend using more than that because you could end up splitting the lumber. And if you do end up splitting the lumber, then you might want to go to smaller nails. And if you're going to be using lumber larger than a two by four, you can always space your sill plates out a little further. So we have a ledger over here. Let's go ahead and take a look at another method you could use. And that would be to install blocks. And of course, these blocks are probably going to have to be shaped because they are going to get progressively larger as you work your way down the sloping slab of the garage floor. 
Now next up, let's go ahead and take a look at something that you might be able to use to save a few dollars. For example, if you're going to be ripping some angled lumber, then you're usually going to be starting with one board that you're going to be shaping. However, don't forget to check the other board to see if you're going to be able to use it. Or you might be better off getting 2x6, 2x8, or 2x10 so that you can use both halves of the board. And I know that sounds like uh, common sense, but trust me, I'm throwing it out there. A lot of people could miss something like this and buy one board for every joist when they won't need to. And of course, if you're going to be using this method here, you might be able to do something like this to where you can use both pieces also. So maybe a two by six, two by eight, something like that will work a little better and save you a few dollars and in our last example for attaching the sill plates, you could always use anchors like these or even epoxy. And just keep in mind that if you are going to do something like this and you decide to reconvert your garage back to a garage, that the garage floor might not look as well as it did before you did all of this. And of course, framing anchors like these might be able to be spaced out a little further also. So there you have it. There's my two cents. If it makes sense, great. If it doesn't, maybe watch the video again or leave any questions you have in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.